Shanti. Happy Monday. <laughs> so let us begin our session for today. Keep your back and neck straight. Sit comfortably. Very gently close your eyes and just start observing your breath. Watch the natural flow of your breathing as you inhale and as you exhale. So just become aware of your breathing process and start connecting with yourself. Now slowly and gently shift your attention and awareness to your body. Become aware of your posture and align your body. Your back neck should be straight. Face, neck and shoulders should be relaxed. Your weight should be equally balanced on both the hips. Align your posture. And gently come back to your breathing once again. Once you feel aligned, shift the attention back to your posture. Sorry, breath. And begin to deepen the breathing. Slow, long, and deep inhalations. Slow, long, and deep exhalations. We will open today's session by chanting Om three times, followed by three Shantis. Take a deep breath in for Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Feel the vibrations. Join your palms together and begin to rub the palms. Place the palms on the eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at the palms. Open up your eyes. Om Shanti. Let us begin our session for today. So in previous session, we were talking about mantra meditation. We discussed why mantra meditation should be done and how it's like a very... Um, easy way to connect to calm yourself down 
in comparison to focusing on your breath and today we are going to uh, discuss more deeply om namah shivaya so in last class we have chanted om namah shivaya uh, for a little while today we are going to do more chanting so when it comes to any kind of mantra uh, when we are doing mantra meditation at least 5 to 10 minutes of chanting will give you an insight into um what is the impact okay so it's not like you if you chant 3 or 5 times of course it will show its impact but in order to actually um uh, see what a technique is doing you especially in the case of mantra you should at least give 5 to 10 minutes to practicing that mantra after 5 minutes of continuous practice you can become a reasonable judge of what uh result you are getting out of the technique right if i stop chanting the mantra say suppose at two minutes right minimum time i'm telling you right so suppose i stop at two minutes okay so i will be able to feel the impact there is no doubt about it but by the end of five minutes you know actually the vibration of that mantra it will start impacting me at a deep level all right so initially on surface level it sound uh, starts with the pronunciation the sound the closing of the eyes right and then the vibration begins as you start chanting the mantra but in order to seep to more deeper levels like change of breath or change of state of mind right uh and the direction where for which you are uh working with a particular mantra right so when i talked in the previous class about also setting an intention right so the meaning that you are being taught it's going to help you to set the intention so in order to give power or fuel to that intention minimum 5 minutes of practice should be done right uh at least one time in a day so if you can take out more amount of time go ahead take more time and go for longer sessions but before 5 minutes you cannot be the judge of uh, is that actually working for you or not right okay so 5 5 minutes you have to start with and slowly you can prolong that time period and come to a like more uh, like a, like longer amount of time to do the chanting right okay so now let's come to om namah shivaya so in previous class i have shared the meaning of om namah shivaya with you where i simply said that you know uh, shiv he is considered to be the uh, point of origination of yoga and when we are chanting om namah shivaya we are paying our respect to the person who has given us yoga right so i will share my screen once again to show you the mantra om namah shivaya right so now let's delve into the greater meaning of om namah shivaya right so the first thing that should you know uh come up in your mind right when you think of om namah shivaya it's the very basic question of who shiv is right because we are paying to lord shiv and as i told you he's the you know person who gave you but who actually is shiv right this question comes up and you know if we uh, in india we are like having uh, you know three gods and i have i have talked of this earlier also in a meditation brahma vishnu and mahesh so creation preservance and destruction and i told you then that with destruction you know mahesh mahesh is another name for lord mm-hmm. shiv okay so when we talk mm-hmm. of uh, mahesh he is the destroyer right so when something gets destroyed it creates space for another thing to you know get created right so if suppose you are buying uh, let's say 10 t-shirts okay so now uh, you have 10 t-shirts with you and if you want to get another new one right you have space for only 10 if you want to get another new one you will have to take out one or two right so in order to create space for something new to come in you need to first cleanse or uh, you know 
uh, get rid of the previous things, right? So Shiv is considered to be the destroyer, which creates space for new creation, right? So Shiv, this term is made, so Shiv is this term, this entire mm -hmm. Shiv, Shiv, okay, Shiv. So Shiv is this term. So this is also made out of further, I will split it into she, this is she, S, H, I, she, and then we have Va, or she, Va, Shiv, right? S, H, I is one split. Maybe it's not very clearly visible. Wait, let me just erase this. All right, so Shiv, I split it in two parts. One is she, S H I, she, and other one is Va. All right, so she, this term is denoting unlimited energy. This one. This is denoting the unlimited energy that is existing, right? And Va, this is giving this she direction, all right? So this energy, Va, this gives direction to this she, which is unlimited energy, yeah. right? So now, if we look from this analogy, from unlimited energy creation takes place, right? So who is Shiv? He is the creator also, right? Because if you go to Shiv Puran, right? This split is given in Shiv Puran. If you give, go to Shiv Puran, over there, she is representing the unlimited energy. Everything around you is created out of the unlimited energy, right? The universe is ever expanding. There was a source of energy which, according to Big Bang, you know, it exploded, right? And then it created everything around us, right? So this unlimited energy is the source of creation of everything, right? When were this joins with it, so this portion, when these two things, they come in union, right? It gets direction. So this unlimited energy, this is getting direction because of work. Right, so preservance takes place. Right, when I give this unlimited energy direction, it gets preserved. Right, it gets sustained. Okay, and then for destruction, we already know if war is not there, this energy can go haywire also, right? So it can create also, but then because it is unlimited in its nature, it can destroy also at the same time, right? So destruction part is generally very clear why Shiv is considered to be a destroyer. But these two portions where he is the creator as well as the preserver, these two get, you know, uh, lost in between, right? It's like, the water is flowing, river is flowing, and then when Va is joining with she, right? So the it's getting direction. So like the river, the river that flows, right? It is getting direction, and because it is getting direction, it is le leading to life all around it. You know, people used to come and settle near water. Why? Because it is the source which preserves preserves them or sustains them, right? Water is essential for all of us, right? So the same water, right, if left unchecked, it will destroy everything around it. But because it is getting direction, it is le leading to the preservance, food, items, flowers, plants, they're growing around the river because of the direction that the river has. It is not overflowing right it is moving in a direction and as much as is required for the sustenance it is providing that amount of water 
right so shiv is all three he is the creator he is the preserver and then he is also the destroyer right he also leads to the destruction because it's the completion of entire cycle so if you look at everything around you you know it's going through this cycle only right there is no exception the things that are not you know getting uh, like perished in front of you later on they will like uh, some plants they have very long life right but they are going through all the three cycles in their existence they are getting created from somewhere then they are getting preserved and finally at the end of the day there is supposed to be destruction so that there is space created for new things right so om namah shivaya we are paying respect to the creator preserver and destroyer of everything right let's come to the uh, you know uh, second uh, meaning right so it's okay if you don't believe in lord shiv you know you shouldn't restrict yourself to uh, you know that if i don't believe in this god then i cannot practice om namah shivaya no right so more logical meaning is also given to om namah shivaya and uh, uh, let's briefly discuss that also then we will go directly for the practice of om namah shivaya and today we are going to you know practice it for longer period of time okay so let's begin to let om namah shivaya wait little bit difficulty over here yeah she okay wow and then yeah this is shiva okay so om namah shivaya this i told you it can be nama shivaya this is having five sounds total first sound is na like i have highlighted n a na this is representing your earth element na ma is representing the water element okay so earth water these two elements are getting represented by these two sounds na ma all right now shivai so first uh, split that we are getting out of this is shi she means it's representing the fire element va is representing your air element and ya this is representing your final ether or space element right space for the sake of simplicity let us write down space only right so all these five sounds they are representing one one element each right so now if we come to science if we come to science we will see this thing that science is saying that each and everything is formed out of five elements total there are five elements which are forming everything around you and they are in fact the reason of your existence also earth water fire air space right so when we chant om namah shivaya right we are creating the sound frequency which is matching the frequency at which these elements are existing panch mahabhut right panch mahabhut are there so we will do what we are going to um uh create the sound so each and everything is existing at a particular frequency so science is also coming to prove this thing and in general also 
everything is existing at different different frequencies right so there is a frequency at which earth earth element is existing right so now to match that frequency when i chant na it is generating the frequency of the earth element when i chant ma it is generating the frequency of the water element right when i chant she it is representing the uh, vibration frequency of the fire element va is representing the frequency of the air element and ya is representing the frequency of space element right so when i chant om namah shivaya i am giving respect i am paying respect to all the five elements all the five elements which are existing i am paying my respect to all of them and i'm chanting om namah shivaya right so it's not necessary that you you know you know you have to connect everything to god only right or you have to believe in a particular god in order to you know um be able to do the chanting of a particular mantra right you can very well reach to this uh you know kind of reasoning and you can go ahead and just pay respect to the five elements that are forming you and everything around you so it's not necessary that you always have to you know believe in that god you know it becomes easier so i will say this thing that it becomes easier all right yeah so i just uh, thought that this is something i should explain more deeply right so when you believe in a certain god right it becomes easier for you to create a sense of surrender when you are chanting a particular mantra right but it's not necessary that you believe in it like right now when i gave the name of each and every element when i gave you the explanation that this is the sound vibration of this this element so this is easier to accept sometimes okay so it's okay if you don't believe in lord shiv it is completely all right and you can still do the chanting so the the second reasoning you know it helps you to move past the surface level or the label of the mantra right and it gives you a deeper understanding on how the sound is working and in mantra meditation it is very very essential that you understand the working of the vibration the science of the sound has to be understood right but if you are devoted right it becomes easier it comes more naturally to you right when you feel the gratitude for what you are practicing right so in some form or the other all of you are practicing you when you develop your sense of awareness through the yogic practices you develop your sensitivity towards the yogic practices you come to this conclusion that you should pay minimum respect right some minimum amount of respect should be paid right suppose i'm making something right and you are consuming it right so you will feel gratitude for the person who is making that for you in that same way you know yoga was created and practiced by lord shiv even before he gave it to anybody else you know he experimented on him, himself right to see the impact of the practice so you know he didn't even just say that you know do this practice he did the practice himself he went through all of the stages that you are you know currently experiencing right from pain in the body everything everything you know he experienced all of those things and once he validated the practice he passed it down so that it could do good to humanity right so in that same way when you are doing some practice there should always be a sense of acknowledgement you know for the person who has first made the effort to you know figure out and do the practice himself and then pass it down to you saying that you know if you do this consistently you will come out right of all of your sufferings not just one or two sufferings that are there but all the sufferings this is the ultimate solution right otherwise you guys would have joined a dance class no it's so entertaining it will give you flexibility it will you know give you more control and gain over 
even how you breathe or you would have maybe joined a singing class for that matter right but you came into yoga why because you were looking for something deeper you were looking to come out of all of your miseries not just one or two if it was just a matter of one or two you would have very well gone for some other hobby but you came in the process of yoga trusting what yoga is right so if your faith if your gratitude develops the practice is going to you know it's the same law the the way in which i put in is the kind of output that i get out of it so my input is going to always you know uh determine how the output is right so if i do something with a lot of dedication with a lot of faith with a lot of sense of surrender its result is going to get multifold right so i'm not asking you or convincing you that believe in lord shiv right but i'm just saying that the power of faith is a lot right so uh i think we can go ahead and begin the chanting so today we will be chanting for some more amount of time right so just prepare yourself so just wherever you are uh, if there is anything around you remove those things okay you have to clear the space also around you just make sure nothing is obstructing you know you are in a clean and clear space sit comfortably and when you feel ready very gently begin to close your eyes and be, uh, uh, become aware of your natural breath watch the natural flow of your breathing as you inhale and as you exhale Just start connecting with the breathing. Allow the breath to take, uh, to shift your attention inward. Stay with the breath for a few more seconds. And now, gently shift your attention to your body. Become aware of your posture, and as you become aware, you will see that you naturally start adjusting your back, neck. adjust the body so that you are correctly aligned and now gently come back to your breathing once again begin to deepen the breath go for slow long and deep inhalations slow long and deep exhalations inhale and exhale deeply so that you can prepare your breath for the chanting of the mantra
deep breaths in, deep breaths out. And now, just prepare yourself mentally. Take some time to set your intention and also take a mental resolution before you begin your practice. You will not move your body for the remaining of the practice. So this is the mental resolution. And simultaneously set your intention. So it could be as simple as I will be aware throughout my practice. Or you can go for any other kind of uh, affirmation that you feel will be helpful for you. And dedicate your practice to that intention. Now gently come back to breathing. Stay with the breathing for a few more moments before we begin our practice. Keeping the back and neck straight, take a deep breath in for Om Namah Shivaya. Continue the practice like this. Just keep doing the chanting. <clears throat> Shivam 
continuing the chanting <coughs> keep chanting om namah shivaya again and again trying to feel the vibrations Just continue the chanting. If you feel that you are tired, you don't, you are unable to chant the mantra verbally, you can go ahead and start the chanting in your mind. Or you can just continue the chanting. Om Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Shiva Just few more times, continue the chanting. We'll chant one last time. Om Namah 
Feel the vibrations, suspend your practice completely and just feel the vibrations of Om Namah Shivaya, this powerful mantra. Feel the vibrations and feel the sensations that are generated after the chanting of Om Namah Shivaya. Keep your focus completely directed towards the area between both your eyebrows. So focus on the eyebrow center. If you are aware of the image of Lord Shiv, you can go ahead and visualize that as well. And if you feel you are tired, you want to change your posture, go ahead, release your posture. And you can even lie down in Shavasana if you feel the need. So for general relaxation, just release your posture and lie down in Shavasana. Keep your legs slightly apart. and should be away from the body. And palms should face upwards. Entire spine should be straight. So from the from your neck region till the lower back, the base of your spine, it should be completely straight and should be contact, in contact with the mat. So don't tilt your neck towards either of the sides. Keep the head straight and lie down comfortably. Once you lie down, you can go ahead and surrender your body completely to the gravitational pull. Leave your body loose. Surrender the body to the pull of the gravity and leave all the muscles of your body loose. And as you begin to loosen your body, you can also begin to loosen the mind. Allow your mind to just be and go deeply into Shavasana where your body is relaxed, your mind is relaxed.
Now very slowly and gently begin to come back. Start connecting with your breath once again. As you breathe in, feel your abdomen rise and expand. As you breathe out, contract your abdomen. Try to bring your navel as close to your spine as possible and expel out all the air from your body. Just stay connected with your breath. Inhale abdomen up, exhale abdomen in. Now we start becoming aware of your body posture. Become aware of all the sounds that are around you. If you were sitting and practicing still, you can begin to suspend your practice. If you're lying down, sitting up straight, you can begin to uh, move your fingers slowly, move your toes slowly, start coming back. Join both the legs together and turn towards your left side. Make a cushion with your left hand to support your head. Place the right hand on the ground and take one or two deep breaths over here. Enjoy the comfort and safety offered by this position. And now very slowly, gently begin to lift your body up. With the support of the right hand, lift the body up. Come in any comfortable sitting position where your back and neck are straight, eyes are gently closed. Just be with your breath. We are going to close today's session by chanting Om one time, followed by three Shantis. Take a deep breath in for Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Feel the vibrations, the peace, the sense of calmness. Join both your palms together gently, Dada. Huh? Now begin to rub both the palms together. Keep your palms on your eyes, allowing your eyes to absorb the heat. We are going to do this two more times. So rub the palms together. Keep them on your eyes. One last time, rub the palms together. Keep them on your eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms, open up your eyes. Come back with a big smile. Om Shanti. Please feel free to spread this energy on your body. If you're feeling the need in a certain area, you can rub the palms once again and take the energy to the required area. Place your palms over there and Allow that area to absorb the energy of your hands. Om Shanti to everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed your practice. I hope you felt the vibrations of Om Namah Shivaya. Very strong vibrations, very beneficial vibrations are created when you chant Om Namah Shivaya. So guys, keep practicing. Okay. And tomorrow we are not having the meditation class. 
all right so if you your assignment for tomorrow so in that one hour you have to do uh, meditation only right so your assignment for that one hour is that if you haven't caught up on any previous video you're going to go ahead and watch the previous video right so if suppose you have missed out on one or two classes of pranav meditation you can go ahead and catch up on that if you have missed any class in uh, of anapan go ahead watch that and practice with that class right and if you have been following up all this while you are like currently on this class only you are on point right you don't have to cover up anything previously then you can go ahead till this amount of time whatever practices we have done means anapan pranav meditation and in mantra meditation we have covered om namah shivaya so you can go ahead and practice that meditation in the one hour of meditation that we have you can go ahead and uh, practice your meditation technique and by the end of it go for a relaxative shav asan right where you shift the attention from one body body part to the other right so that your entire body relaxes so the, this is how you are going to practice tomorrow only for tomorrow the meditation session is cancelled from wednesday we are going to continue with the remaining of our syllabus right so if something is left catch up if nothing you are uh, currently Uh, doing all the classes timely then you can go ahead choose the most suitable method and do it for a long period of time to see the impact right so in one hour you can maybe divide half an hour and half an hour half an hour you can do your meditative practices and half an hour you can take good shavasan for yourself or maybe 45 minutes of practice and 15 minutes of shavasan as it suits you right so guys i will see you on wednesday enjoy your classes today and tomorrow and uh, keep practicing keep smiling take care and bye bye